Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. So welcome to the third in the series of lectures given by our visitor, uh, jean Ramon Abrial. Um, I have, uh, I mentioned, uh, I, I said a few words of introduction last time also, just to recapitulate. Uh, he has worked on methods for uh, top-down refinement of uh, software systems, and uh, uh, his contributions include systems like uh, B, NB, and uh, Rodan. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <laughs> so well, as I told you last time, we are going now to um, have another example, uh, the mechanic press uh, controller, and um, uh, we'll, um, we'll go on to the notion of design patterns uh, for uh, formal uh, development, and um, we will see how this, this kind of patterns could be used in, in complex um, developments. We, we'll see the pros and the cons of this. There are more pros than cons. <laughs> and, um, and then we'll, we'll see a systematic development of an embedded system. So it's, it's, it's like the, the previous system, the car on a bridge, but it's a little more complicated this time. OK? So the outline is, first of all, uh, an informal presentation of the example, um, then the, the presentation of the design patterns. Uh, then, as you remember, this is very important. We, we're going to write the requirement document and then the refinement strategy. So this is absolutely systematic in, in all developments. And, um, and, and, and then we'll do eventually our um, development, formal development of the model using refinement and design pattern. Okay? So the informal presentation of, of the example. So a, a mechanical press controller, this is adapted from a real system, and it's coming from an institution called INRST, Institut National de Recherche de la Sécurité du Travail. It's a, it's a, it's a national institute in France about uh, the safety of work. So these people uh, study all sorts of conditions uh, by which works are not safe or are safe. And um, a few years ago, they were very afraid because lots of, um, of um, uh, mechanical devices are now controlled by computer. And so they are afraid that um, some bugs or some problems arise from that. So that's the reason why they study um, this uh, 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 press controller. And then I was in touch with them, and I was uh, very pleased to study their system. So a mechanical press is a very simple device. You have a, you have a motor. Is there a pointer here somewhere? Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe this one. Oh, yeah. So you, you, you have a motor. And uh, you, have, you have a rod, and you have a vertical slide, you have a tool, and you have the part. And um, so th this, this engine turns like this. And then there is a clutch that uh, makes the rod connected to the motor or not connected to the motor. And you have four buttons to start, start the motor, stop the motor, start the clutch or engage the clutch and disengage the clutch. So it's, very, it's a very simple thing. It's, it's, it looks very, very simple, but you will see <laughs> that it will become a little more complicated. So um, here is, again, the description, a vertical slide with a tool at its lower extremity, an electrical rotating motor, a rod connecting the motor to the slide. This is the one that was like this, a clutch engaging or, or disengaging the motor and the rod. And when the clutch is disengaged, the, the slides um, uh, stops almost immediately. Okay. So the basic commands I have said: start motor, stop motor, engage the clutch, or disengage the clutch. So you can you can push um, all these buttons. And um, and then um, the the user can do change changing the tool at the bottom of the vertical slide, put a part to be treated on on the bottom under the slide and remove the part. So this is what, what, the, what the user is doing. Okay? So here is a, a typical... So f the first schematic view is we have some commands corresponding to the buttons, and we have the equipment. 
And the typical user session is, is here. We have a, uh, we start the motor with the button B1. We change the tool. We put a part, action two. So the blue are the user actions. The, the red is what um, the system does. Engage the clash with bu button B3. And the press now works. And then disengage the clutch with button B4. The, the press does not work. Then you can remove the part with action three. Um, and then you, you can repeat zero or more times steps three to six. So you can repeat this, this thing here. So you, you, you use the same tool, but you change the part. And um, at some point, you, you decide to change the tool. So you go back to, to, to here, change the tool. And, um, and, you, and you, you, you loop again. So this is a typical session for the user. OK? Clear? Fine. So, so now the problem is that there are some danger. When you change the tool, when you put a part or where you remove a part, um, if you have not disengaged the clutch, then <laughs> you hit your, your hand. And it is, very, it is very well known that the people uh, using those, this kind of machines, they have, they have some problems. And this is the, re the reason why this institute was, um, um, was, was afraid and wanted to do something and see whether we can do something with um, um, a controller of this, me of this mechanism um, governed by a computer. So the idea is to put a controller here in between the commands and the equipment. And this is what we want to develop. Um, but what we've, what we've done so far is not enough. It's not enough to have a controller. What we have to have is um, um, controlling the way the clutch is engaged or disengaged. Because this is the very moment where we engage, where the, 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 the press goes up and down. And if you put your hand, you have problem. And, uh, and this is not enough. We need to have a, a sort of front door so that when the system is working, um, you, cannot, you, you cannot put your hand behind it. So we, we have an, an additional device, which is a f the front door, which could be open like this and closed. And of course, we'll, we'll have some constraints when the uh, system is working like this, or then the, the door must be closed. And when the system is not working, then the, 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 the door must be open so that you can, um, you, you can work under it. Okay. So the front door behavior is this. Initially, the door is open. When the user presses the button B3 to engage the clutch, the door is first closed before engaging the clutch, really. And when the user presses the button B4 to disengage the clutch, then the door is open after disengaging the clutch. So we are absolutely certain then, then there is no trouble for the user. And, and the door has no button. The, the door is, is, in fact, controlled by, by engaging or disengaging the clutch. OK? Yeah? And the door cannot hurt the user. Ah, yeah, yeah. Closing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you can, you can always you can have a, a second door or something like this. You know that in automatic, in automatic metros, where, when, you, when you have no drivers, uh, you have two doors. You have a door on, on, on the platform, and you, have, oh, you have, and you have the door of the train. OK, and precisely for this reason. OK, but still there are some problems with, with uh, ladies with their bag or, you know, things of that sort. So, so um, um, by the way, the most, yeah, or, 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 you know, or people doing some funny thing. And by the way, you know, um, the, most de the most difficult thing in a, in, a, in, a driverless, in a driverless train is opening and closing the door. It's not driving the train. OK, so this, the problem of doors is really a big problem. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so this is this is our system. We have the four the four buttons, and we have the motor, the clutch, and the door, and they will they will receive some order from the controller, and uh, they send also um, by by these wires the the motor, the clutch, and the and, and the door. They send also some information about the status uh, back to the controller. Okay, so let me give you a little a little demo. So we, we, have, we have this initial situation. Then we press the button B1 to start the, the, the engine. So we, 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 put, um, we, put, uh, we put the tool. And then, but, but the thing doesn't work still. 
and then we continue, we put apart, then we continue, and then we, we will at some point engage the clutch, so the, the door is closed, and then the thing works until we press um, the, the button B4 for disengaging the clutch. And so that opens the door, we, um, and the, the, the mod we remove the part, we put a new part, we, we, we engage the clutch, and then we go again, and then um, we, um, we press the button B4 to stop, the, to, to disengage the clutch, so, so the motor is not stopped, but we, we can open the door, then we remove the part, and then um, we remove the tool, and then the final situation. So, so you see, this, this is a typical, um, a, a typical thing. So this is what we want to do. Okay, it's simple, it's not very complicated, but um, there are some problems. So here is another diagram showing the system. You have the controller, you have the, the motor with the, the two buttons, start, stop, and you have the, the, the motor, oh sorry, the button here, the motor, the door, and the clutch, and you have the motor actuator, which send an order to the motor, the motor sensor sending back to, the, um, uh, to uh, the status of the motor to the controller, the same for the door and the same for the, for the clutch, okay? So now let's go to the, this notion of um, design patterns. So what is the idea behind design patterns, formal design patterns? Is that the motivation is that we might have in this system, but in many other system, a number of similar behaviors and we have some complex situation to handle. So the idea is to try to find out whether uh, within this similar behavior, we, we can extract something which is the, the essence of these behaviors and then repeat this in order to have a systematic um, uh, construction. So for example, here similar behavior, um, a specific action result eventually in having a specific reaction. Pushing button B1 results eventually starting the motor. Pushing button B4 results eventually disengaging the, disengaging the clutch. So you, we have an action pushing a button and we have a reaction which is starting a motor or stopping the motor or doing similar thing with the clutch. So these are very, very similar. Um, we have the correlation between pieces of equipment. When the clutch is engaged, then the motor must work. Okay, we do not want to engage the, to engage the clutch. If the motor does not work, it's, it's dangerous. Like this is the s sort of thing. Oh, you, don't, you have only automatic cars here. Yeah, but in, in Europe, there are lots of, of non-automatic cars. So you have to engage the clutch and it's dangerous to engage the clutch if the motor is, is not turning because if then you start the motor, you, you, <laughs> your car um, all of a sudden moves. So the clutch, when the clutch is engaged then the door must be closed. This is also, um, the correlation of pieces of equipment. Uh, making an action depending on another one. Engaging the clutch implies closing the door first. Or uh, disengaging the clutch means opening the door afterwards. So, so we have relationship between, um, between actions. Um, <clears throat> here, is a, here is a complex situation. Let me, let me go on to this. And just to show you to you that it seems to be simple, but it's more complicated. The user push the button B1, but the user keep its hand on the button B1, okay. And then the controller sends a starting command to the motor. The motor start and send feedback to the controller. The controller is aware now that the motor works. The user push button B2 to stop the motor. Hello. And the controller sends a stop command to the motor, the motor stops and sends feedback to the controller. The controller is aware that the motor does not work, but I still have my finger on button B1, okay? And I, I don't want that the motor restart immediately. I have to remove my, my finger and put it again, okay? So, so this, this, this is something that shows that it is not completely simple. Again, when we, I push the button, B1 for starting the motor, the motor starts, and then I do other things, and I stop the motor with another button, and I keep my finger. When, when the motor e eventually stops, I have still my, my, my finger again on this button B1, and I don't want the motor to start immediately. I want, I want first to relieve my, my, my finger and then put it back, yeah? Why no? don't you want the motor to start again? Sorry? 
<coughs> why don't you want don't you want to start the motor to start again? Because because you know I put my finger or I put my hand, so that might be a mistake. Okay, I I I, I don't want um, I, I want I want to have a specific uh, a specific action in order to start. Yeah, it's, like, it's like the Toyota problem. I mean, you press the, the uh, gas and the brake at the same time. Uh -huh. They had accidents. The, the, oh, the oh it should be that something. should be that the brake wins and here. Right. And so yeah, that's ex that's exactly this. Yeah, thank you. So, so you see, we we have to be we have to be careful, and we do not want this to happen. Um, another complex situation is this one: the user the user pushes the button B1 for starting the motor. The controller sends the starting command to the motor. The motor starts and sends feedback to the controller. And the user pushes button B2 to stop the motor. Now the problem is that these <coughs> actions 3, 1 and 3, 2, they are done in the environment and they could be they are done in parallel. Okay? And we don't know which one is going to 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 win first. If the controller treats 3, 1 before 3, 2, the motor is stopped. But if the controller treats 3, 2 before 3, 1, the motor is not stopped. So it depends. On, on the, 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 the race conditions between these two, between these two things. Okay, so we want, we want again, we want again to control this and to, to know exactly what we are doing. Okay. So design pattern. So, so the, the idea of design pattern is, is just this. We want to build systems which are correct by construction. I hope you, you understand this that I have hammered many, many, many times. <laughs> And we want to have more method for doing so. Um, last time I've defined the, this, this car on a bridge uh, system and I, I started by defining things little by little. But now I want to have more method to, to be more completely systematic. And you will see that for a, a system like this, which, which look like not too complicated, it's very, very important because if you, if you do the formal approach or the formal modeling, as a kind of pseudo programming, this is not good. You, we want to be completely sure. So design pattern, as you know, is an object oriented concept and we would like to borrow that concept for doing formal development. And so we will have a preliminary tentative in, with reactive system development. And the advantage is that the system, <coughs> systematic development and also, and w which is very important, um, <coughs> And that doesn't exist for using design pattern in, in the case of OO. We want to save proofs because we, we, we are going to have our design some, some patterns and we have, we have to have some proof of these patterns. And because we are going to reuse this pattern many, many, many times, we will not um, oblige to redo the proof because the proof has been done once and for all. So we can keep the proof. Okay, so this is um, also another advantage. And at the end, you, you will see how much we save. So the personal view <coughs> is that the, the design pattern is an, is an engineering co co concept. Um, it can be used in O, of course. And the goal of the design pattern is to, um, is to solve certain categories of problem. And <coughs> but the design pattern should be adapted to the problem at hand. So this is, this is something that we have, we have off the shelf and we have to adapt it. In, in fact, um, and, and we ask the question, is it compatible with formal development? So let's, let's apply it. But in fact, what we can see here is that this approach is used in, in other engineering disciplines. So, so the, the idea again and again is try to, to borrow from other engineering disciplines. So the, in Wikipedia, if, if we take Wikipedia and you, you press design pattern, you will see that, um, <coughs> and this, this quotation are coming from, are, are from Wikipedia. Design pattern is not a finished design that can be transformed in a, into code. It is a template for how to solve a problem that can be used in many different situations. So it, it's a little model that can be used in many different situations. It has been originated by an architect. And of course, there is the famous book by Gamma and others um, <coughs> for using design pattern in um, object-oriented software development. More on the Wikipedia. Design pattern can speed up the development process by providing tested and proven development paradigm. And for, uh, and for us, yeah, proven is very important. 
<coughs> and the documentation for design patterns should contain enough information about the problem that the pattern addresses, the context in which it is used, and the suggested situation. So we, we are going to define very well um, our patterns. And, um, and some feel that the need for pattern result from using computer in, uh, with insufficient abstraction. So, so uh, you could, as you can imagine, I was very pleased when I saw that. Okay. <laughs> So here, is a, so here is our first design pattern. So we have an action, which is, which is this, for example, pushing a button. And, <clears throat> and eventually, after this, we have a reaction. Okay, so this is also very simple. This will be our first design pattern, okay? And immediately, we see that there are, there are two, two kinds of, of, um, of action-reaction design pattern. There is the one, which we call the weak reaction. Um, this is typically what I have in, in my toilet in, in, in France. When I, when, I, when I turn on the, the, the light, then a fan starts. So I have an action, turning the light, and then a fan. But if I, I, if I turn the light, the light on, and then pretty much off, and then on and off, then the fan doesn't move. Okay, this is exactly this one. In the same way, when the fan works and I, <coughs> and I, I turn the, the light all off and then on, off, off, off on, off, etc., uh, then the fan uh, continue. Okay? So this is something that, that you encounter many, many, many times. So this is an action and a weak reaction. Okay? And the action and a string reaction and a strong reaction is one where the, um, the, the reaction and the action are synchronized. So we have the action here, and after the action, we have the, the reaction here, and the, the, the action can go down only when the reaction is up, okay? So we have a strong synchronization. And obviously, this, the strong reaction pattern is a refinement of the, of the weak one. So this is what we are going to, um, to study. So we will build first a model for the weak reaction, and then the, the strong reaction will be a refinement of it. Okay? So <clears throat> let's do it. So we have two variables, A and R, A for action and R for reaction. And A is 0, 1, uh, R is 0, 1. Um, <clears throat> and so these are the, the variables, and these are the, the, the invariants. And, and then we introduce two things, CA, and, and CR, the counter, the counter of, of, <coughs> of A and R when they are uh, equal to one. And the, mo the modeling of the weak reaction is exactly this, that CR is smaller than or equal to CA. Okay? This, is, this is what models the formalize the, the weak reaction. So <coughs> now, so we have here defined just uh, the, the static part. So the dynamic part is now <clears throat> the following for, for the action, A on, the, the, the action is off, and then it's on, and we um, increment the counter here. A off is just doing this when we go down here. And now the reaction, <clears throat> when, <clears throat> when R is zero and A is one, then we can have the reaction, and then we, we, we have the incrementation of this counter, and then we have... Um, we have this when we go when the reaction goes goes down, R is down. Oh, a, a is A is down, and R is up up, and then we go we go down. So this is this is very simple. Okay. So now we have to prove that this is correct. So <clears throat> here are the four events, and here is a sort of uh, fuzzy diagram showing that we can do R on if we have got A on and if we have got R off. So, for example, R on is here, it's when R is zero and when A is one. So we, this is a, the connection we have <coughs> between, um, between the values, um, the values seven. And we can, we can see here that we, go, we can go back and forth here and we are not influenced by the, uh, by the reaction. Okay. So now we have our complete system with the initialization here. <coughs> but of course, nothing guarantees that um, the invariants are preserved. And the invariant is just this. 
So <coughs> let's, let's do it. Um, and let me give you now a little demo about this. Uh, here I'm going to load the patterns. The weak one. So it's here, we, we see it. It's, ex it's exactly what we had on the, um, on the slides. And um, let's go on, on, the, on the proofs. And we shall see that one proof has not been, has not been done. So let's, <coughs> let's go, um, let's load this, um, uh, this proof obligation here, proving. And so you remember, we have the goal here. So we have to prove, we have to prove this under this, um, this hypothesis, which is the, the invariant and the two guards. And we can have a look at exactly what is the situation by giving here. Here we have the, the event and we have the, the invariant. Okay, so clearly this is not possible to, to prove this. So what we have to have is when R is zero and A is one, then CR should be strictly smaller than CA. Okay, and that will prove, that will prove the, the, the problem. So let's do this. So we go back to the, the thing and we add this invariant, which is... Was not Sorry? Invariant was not strong enough, exactly. So here we do this. We put this invariant here. Oops. Ah, yeah, I did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. do this. Okay. Okay, and now we have we have the little star here, so we have to save and have a look have a look here. So we save it. And that's it. Okay? So we, we have we have now solved um, our, this little problem and again this is very very classical. You go into the proof, you figure out the problem and you transform your, your model. So let's go now, let's continue now. And <clears throat> ah, let's, ah, first of all, when that is very important. Um, once you, you have discovered something by doing the proof, it, it's, it's nice to go back to the problem. And here we, we see exactly what it means. R is zero and A is one. This is exactly the situation. And then we have CR which is certainly smaller than CA because we have incremented here CA, okay? So we, we understand uh, really the problem. This is exactly like in mathematics when you solve a problem uh, of geometry, for example, by uh, doing some computation, um, and then you go back to the geometric problem and you see exactly the situation. Um, so we have to do here, we have to do the same sort of thing. Okay. So this is a summary of the, of the weak reaction. And now, of course, we do not need that anymore. This, has, this was just introduced in order to do <coughs> the, the semantics of an action and a weak reaction. So in the, in the final model for this, we can, we can remove the, the counters and, and this is our design pattern. This is the pattern we put off, off the shelf and we are going to use it systematically for um, building up our problem. So let's go now to, to, and this is the weak synchronization. So let's go now to the strong, to the strong uh, reaction. So the strong reaction, again, is, is just that um, <coughs> we, we cannot go down, uh, the, re the action cannot go, go down if the, 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 action, the reaction is not up. So <coughs> we had the following invariant, CA is smaller than or equal to CR plus one. And so if we put this one and this one together, we have either CA is CR, which is here or here or here, and we, uh, or CA is just CA plus 
C equal to CR plus one. So we, they, they just alternate. <coughs> so, uh, actually, I have a question regarding the previous one. You removed the counter side. Yeah. And does the counter side have the same value as the counter side? Or you remove them, or do you actually, I mean, is it some sort of refinement step where you remove the counter? No, I, I, <coughs> I just go on the text and remove them. Uh, because I, I will not need them for, um, f in a problem. Because I, I have proved now that that this has got the property. If you want to keep them, you could. Okay, but there, there are some, some kind of ghost variable. They, they are not needed in the problem. Okay, because you were, we were just using them in order to prove that we had the action and reaction. Yeah? You can't even state invariant now. You can even? You cannot state invariant anymore. No, you cannot say the invariant anymore, but, but we have proved it. Yeah, but we don't have any record of it. Okay, so if you want to keep it, you can keep it. I have another question about the yeah. action reaction with the strong one. So the action typically is a physical action, yeah. right? And you cannot prevent it from going back to zero before the reaction has happened. So it seems to me I don't understand why we're doing this. Um, uh, the strong one. Yes. Uh, you will see that in fact sometimes the 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 the, the action is done by a computer. Right, but you motivated it by a buttons. Yeah, I motivated by the, but you, you will see that, that in fact we have a chain of action reaction. When I push the button, then the computer reacts, and the computer reacts in, do, in sending something to the motor. So, so we have an action, reaction, that reaction is transformed into a, another action, and it goes to the motor. So in, in that second case, um, the action is, is done by the computer, so we can completely control it. Okay, so you will see in a minute. So the, so the, so the button press will have a weak reaction, yeah. but then the motor control commands will have a strong reaction. Exactly. It's, you got it. Okay, so, um, so we keep, we keep for, for the moment the, the events li like this, and we have added this. So nothing guarantees that the environment is preserved. And again, we'll have some uh, little problem that we can, we can see. So what I'm going to do now is to remove this, remove this, and remove this. Load the strong. OK. So this is this is a strong where I have not I have not modified at all uh, nothing I have nothing modified for the moment. So let's have a look at the the proofs. Um, there are not many proofs, but there is just just one that fails, which is Aon part one one. So let me um, let me go this uh, here. See what happens. So here I have um, the hypothesis is C A C C A C A smaller than a C A plus one, and the, the and the goal is C A equals C R. So of course um, I cannot prove I cannot prove this from this. Um, so the idea, the simplest idea, which is quite often the case, you add the invariant that is missing. So you add when A is zero, you add that C A is equal to C R. So let's do this. So we uh, go to edit this time. We add this invariant, uh, which is here. OK. And, um, <coughs> and now I save. Ah, <laughs> the, the situation is not so nice. Uh, we solve this problem, but we find out another problem, of course. <laughs> Um, in, um, for, this, um, for this event, so let's go there. What? You, when you click, when you saved, you got a couple new proofs in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so what does this thing show? Does it show only the proofs that were... Uh, so it, it, shows, it shows the new proof that has been done automatically, and, and it, it, is, it has not redone some proof which were not impacted by the, by the modification. And, <clears throat> and then he figured out that he cannot do this one automatically. Yeah, but I mean, this one wasn't even there before. 
No, no, of course, but it was not before because we have added an invariant. And if we add an invariant, we have to prove it. Okay. That's the price to pay when you, when you, we, you have two solutions. You have two solutions when you have a problem. You can, you can change action or change guard or, and we will see that later, or you can modify the invariant. If you modify the invariant, then, uh, sorry, if you change, if you add an invariant, then you have to prove it. Okay? So, so here we have, so here we have this thing, A1, and CA is equal to CR. Um, it seems that we, we are tempted to add A1 implies CA in, e equal to CR, but um, we are a refinement of weak. And in weak, let me go back to weak here. And in weak, we had already um, this invariant when A is equal to 1, then CR is smaller than CA. Okay, so we cannot do this. So we, we will do A1 and R1, then our CA is equal to CR. So this is the one we are going to add here. So we do, we do this. Okay, and now we save. Ah, now we have, we have exactly the same problem as before, but we will solve the problem, or this problem here, but we will have some, some other um, uh, invariant to prove. So let's do this. So you see here, we, we, are, we have more things, but we still have some problem here for, uh, for A on and, and A off. So let's go there. Uh, so again, this is the typical work. So we go, we go there. And um, <clears throat> oh, so ah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that I don't know what happens these days, but sometimes I have to reload it. I've sent mail to complain to the to the people. <laughs> um, okay, so I was um, I was here. Um, even B. Okay, here we are. So we we are we are in this situation here where we have to prove we have to prove this and we have this as hypothesis so clearly it is not possible so we we should have something which which is the fact that that the um the assumptions are contradictory okay and we have a0 and r1 so it is very very tempting here to put as a new guard this time in order to get the contradiction that a is equal to 1 so let's do this. So we go on to um, back here, and we go on to uh, a on events, a on, and here we add. Uh, oh no, this was not a on. This was this was um, a off. Sorry. Oh, okay. So this is the, so this is this one. Then, uh, right, and so um, and so now we do the same here. Is so we do uh, we save. So this problem is solved, and uh, um, and now we have to go to this one. And this is the situation is the same, is the same here. We have to we have to add R one. For the very good reason that in um, that in the invariant we have um, we have exactly what we need in the invariant. We have this: when a one is one and r is one, then c a is c r. Okay, so we we are tempted to do this to to go on to the second one here and to add r, r equals to one as an as an additional as an additional guard. So we'll do this. Okay, and now we go we go to 
saving, and that's it. Okay, so, so you see what we've done, we have either added some invariant or we have um, strengthened um, the guard. And now let's go back to the slides. Um, so we, um, so we, we, have, we have added this. And ah, what is nice here is that these two can be put together and um, because we have the same right-hand part of the implication, therefore we can take the disjunction of these two and as A is zero or one, or that gives us, or that gives us or this. And, and now we have, uh, this was coming from the abstraction and this is a new one we have here. And so we can, we can even further simplify by saying when A is one and R is zero, then CA is CR plus one because, because this is one or the other. And when A is zero and R is one, or R is one, then we have CA is equal to CR. So this is the final thing we, we get. And now we can go back to the problem and see what it means. And it means, it means exactly what we have here. Um, in this portion here, A1 and, A1 and R0, we have CA is CR plus one. And in these two portions, either A0 or R is one, we have CA is CR in, in both cases. So of course, we could have, we could have found us um, from, from the beginning, but um, we were helped with, by the computer to do this. And so what you see here is that the two conditions here are just um, a complement of each other because we have an N transformed into an O and here we change the value. Okay, and so this is, this is nice to see exactly um, what is the, um, uh, the situation. Okay, and so again, um, or debatable, I remove the, the, the counter and, and now this is the new situation where I have now just added this, these two guards, which is quite normal because, because now you see the situation is completely symmetric between the actions and the reaction. And, and we have now the strong synchronization like, like this. For example, it, to do an A on, you should have done before an A off, of course, and also an R off. So the, the things are, um, are synchronized in this way. Right, <clears throat> so what we have learned, we have learned that proof failures um, help us in proving our model. We, when an invariant preservation proof fails on an event, we have two solutions, and we have seen the two solutions, adding a new invariant or strengthening the guard. The, the, what we've done at the end was precisely this, strengthening, st or strengthening the guard. Oop. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, and uh, modeling consideration help us choosing one or the other. And at the end, we have reached um, a stable situation, which, which is kind of a fixed point, because what we have, we have introduced new things, which generate new problems, and we introduce more things to generate more problems until the moment where we reach a situation where the thing is, is, is all right, okay? Now, again and again, uh, we could have done that directly. We could have, you know, a parachute <laughs> the invariant directly, but it's better to have done it with the proof because it is again and again completely systematic. And each time we, 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 we control what we're doing. So now, uh, eventually we write the requirement document and we'll come to your suggestion. The system has got the following pieces of equipment, a motor, a clutch and a door. Four buttons are used to start and stop the motor and engage the, or disengage the clutch and the controller is supposed to manage um, this equipment. Ah, and now we have the, the buttons and the controllers are weakly synchronized and the controllers and equipment are strongly synchronized. So we will have a, a chain reaction between the two. Um, now when the clutch is engaged, the motor must work and when the clutch is engaged, the door must be closed. So we have this, these two things. 
safe one and safe two. And, and moreover, um, we have the following additional functional uh, requirement. When the clutch is engaged, the door cannot be closed several times. When the clutch is engaged, the, the door is closed once, and, and then we cannot reopen it while the, the clutch is engaged, so only, only once. And the same, when the door is closed, the clutch cannot be disengaged several times, only, only once. which says that the door has to be uh, closed when the clutch is engaged, wouldn't that imply it? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's related. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. It's related. But, but it doesn't matter to have some redundant um, of, uh, requirements. And then opening and closing the door are not independent. It must be synchronized with disengaging and engaging the, clo uh, the, the, clutch, and, uh, the clutch. And again, this is not completely independent. So here again is uh, the, the, the situation we have. And uh, now I'm going to finish in five, 10 minutes. So we are proposed a refinement strategy. And so the refinement strategy we are going to propose is the following. We, we, we want to refine this. So we are not going to start with the entire system at once. So the idea is to, is to um, have an empty controller at the beginning and then plug the motor, and then plug the, the, the buttons, and then connect the controller to, um, to the clutch, and then constrain the clutch um, and, and the motor. So little by little, I'm, I'm building the system. Connecting the controller to the door, constraining the clutch and the door, more constraint between the clutch and the door, precisely we will see them, and then eventually connecting the clutch button to the controller. So you, so you see, we, we, are just, we are just plugging things. And each time, each time in each of these, of these process, we are going to use and define more design pattern. So, so that there, there will be no invention in, 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 this, in the construction. We are plugging and using the, the various um, design patterns. So let me just show you um, the usage of the first pattern. So we have we start we start this one. Okay, we start with a strong connection between the controller, and now this is a strong where the action is here, um, and the motor, controller and equipment, controller and equipment. This is a piece of equipment are strongly synchronized. Fun two. So let's take off the shelf our strong. Um, our strong uh, design pattern. And you remember what we, we've seen in Wikipedia, this is, this is a partial thing. So this is not connected to the real problem. This is just um, a, a general design pattern. So what we have to do now is to start defining the problem uh, uh, at hand. So we have status for the, um, um, for, the, for the motor. It is either stopped or working. So we, we just define this. Um, and then we have two variables, which is the motor sensor and the motor actuator, and they are bo both um, status. So <coughs> here, here is, is the action, the motor actuator. There is a command com going from the controller to the motor. Then the, mo the motor reacts, it starts, and it sends um, um, a reaction to um, the, a strong reaction to the controller. So what we are going to do is very simple and very systematic. We are going to repaint the, the pattern. So, so A, R, 0, and 1 are repainted as motor actuator, motor sensor stopped and working. And the various action of the, um, of the pattern are repainted to treat start motor, treat stop, stop motor, motor start, and motor stop. These are into the equipment, and this is inside the controller. And I've taken the convention that all events inside the, the controller start with treat. This is written here. So we do this painting, OK? This, this is very systematic. We, we could do this with, with, um, with, with uh, anything. And, <clears throat> and then here it is in it of the design pattern and then in it of the, um, of, the, of the first model. 
And then we, we repaint what we have seen here, A on, treat start motor, it is exactly this with the new painting. And, <clears throat> and the same here with the new painting. I could add at this point, I could add the, con the, 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 the various um, uh, counters, but we know that this works correctly. And the same for A off and the same for R off. So we have, we, we, you remember this diagram here, so now we have this diagram here for the, um, for the, the first um, synchronization between the controller and the, um, and the motor. We have two events in the, mot in, in the environment, motor start, motor stop, and we have, three, and we have two events in the, within the controller, which are um, or just this one. Okay. So now the first refinement, we are going to connect the motor button, so these two here, with the controller. And, um, and we, have, um, we, we, we are going to take account of this functionality that the, the buttons and the controller are weakly synchronized. Okay, so we'll stop here and we'll do that next time. But you, you will see here the, the most important thing that we will have is that we will have a chain of action reaction. We have, we have an action pushing the button, pushing the button goes into the controller, and then the, 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 the way the controller reacts is precisely to send the, the order to um, the command to the, to the motor. Okay, so we, we, will, we will see this and we will see how we can, how we can compose two design patterns, a weak one here on top and a strong one here on the right. Okay, so we'll do that next time, Le, um, Monday. So on Monday, we'll, we'll finish the, the, this, this um, uh, construction of the, of the press. And if I have enough time, I will start then the, something totally different, the definition of, of sequential program um, using event B. And maybe the week after, if, if you are still willing <laughs> to come, <laughs> Um, uh, I could um, uh, develop something also completely different, which will be the development of, um, of um, electronic circuits using event, event B, which is another story also, completely different. Okay, thank you very much.